This was a registered report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. This show is about Plymouth County real estate. Our headlines for the month was the recording numbers continue to lag behind. This show is being taped in May. We're talking about the recordings in April at the Registry of Deeds. I have a great guest in the second segment of the show, Brenda O'Connor, who is the president of the South Shore Irish Heritage Trail. And then we'll talk about some of our county and colony history. So let's get to the numbers. Our recording numbers are not what they were a couple of years ago. Real estate is very slow right now. There were 534 deeds recorded in April, um, less than the uh, 540 in March, 26 less percent than last year. Um, recording year to date is down 26%. Uh, but if you look at the listing of deeds and unit deeds for Plymouth County all the way from Abington to Whitman, you can see that every town has had sales of property, uh, Plymouth and Brockton being the highest. Um, the biggest uh, numbers that are down for us are mortgages. When the rates started to go up, complements of the Federal Reserve, uh, mortgages dropped significantly. Uh, everyone just about stopped refinancing. Uh, purchase mortgage is a still going on money to use. Mortgages used to buy property. The 1,002 mortgages recorded in April, less than the 1,100 in March, were down 47% compared to the 1891 in April of 2022. And year to date, we're down 51% in mortgages. That's over half the number of mortgages recorded. So looking at foreclosures, which we always do since the meltdown in 2008, they're very, very low. Um, first of all, there was a foreclosure moratorium in place during COVID. And although that was lifted, it is still very low. There were only nine foreclosure deeds throughout the whole of Plymouth County in April. Less than the 11 in, in March, and in foreclosure deeds were up 26%, though, because of the moratorium when there were none going on. Uh, the thing we're watching carefully now are foreclosure notices. A foreclosure notice is the first document we receive at the registry that pretty much tells us someone's in trouble paying their mortgage. And whether it's um, a financial issue, a job issue, um, an illness that caused you to have trouble paying your mortgage, if you're having that difficulty, don't hesitate. Reach out to a federal housing counselor. You may be able to modify the terms or the length of your mortgage and keep the home in your ownership. So as far as foreclosure notices are concerned, there were 36 foreclosure notices recorded in April, less than the 60 recorded in March. It's down 19% from the foreclosure notices in April 22, but up 34% year to date. You're also gonna see a listing of foreclosures by community from Abington alphabetically to Whitman, and you'll see a lot of zeros there still. Uh, Brockton, Plymouth, and Wayham have been usually the most troublesome over the years, and that's continuing at least of orders of no in orders of notice. But again, historically, those numbers are very, very low. A couple things about the registry. Um, we offer a free fraud alert. There's a lot of talk going on in advertising, in word of mouth, mouth in property fraud. If you sign up for our site, if you go to PlymouthDeeds.org on our website, click on resources, you'll be able to put in the fraud alert section, your email, and anything recorded against your name will generate an email. And that would give you a heads up that something's been recorded. Now, maybe it's something that you want to be recorded, 
like a discharge of a mortgage, but at least it gives you a heads up that something's happened affecting your title and you can take action. We're recording a number of documents over the internet. Over 80% of our recorded land comes in online by e-recording. And in our land court, the other section of recordings is about over 50% coming in in land court recordings. We now have reached over 2,000 contracts with individuals who have the ability and the right to e-record their documents with Plymouth County. It's fascinating how COVID has changed the whole world of recording. Uh, so be, be also aware of anything to do with your property. There are alerts out there for scams. Companies will try to get you to pay a lot of money to get a copy of your deed. You can go to one of our offices in Brockton, Plymouth, and Rockland, and get a copy of your deed for a dollar. And um, don't fall for that scam. Um, we're doing a transcription project. Our, our writing on a, a lot of our documents that go back to the early days are in beautiful cursive. Cur cursive is not being taught in the schools these days. So we're doing a transcription project. So a printed image instead of the cursive image. And we're already up from 1685 to 1868. I have a great guest coming up, Brenda O'Connor, president of the South Shore Irish Heritage Trail. So we'll see you in the next segment. Welcome back to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I am the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. And in this segment of the show, we've always done something educational in nature, usually related to real estate. We've had appraisers, assessors, commercial real estate brokers, home inspectors, many realtors. But in this segment of the show, we're doing something of more general interest. And I have a great guest with me today, Brenda O'Connor, who's the president of the South Shore Irish Heritage Trail. Welcome, Brenda. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And it's a double welcome because this month is National Teacher's Day, and I know you were a teacher for many years. I was. I taught in Cambridge for 40 years and loved every moment of it. Great. So let's talk about how the South Shore Heritage Trail got off the ground and who you work with and how you brought that forward. Well, uh, being a retired teacher, uh, of course, having worked all my life, I, I needed something to do, and a situate uh, decided as the most Irish town in America, they needed to have a sister city in Ireland. And they formed a committee, and I joined that. And one of the tasks they set us to do was to celebrate the Irish history and culture in Situate. And we found it was too narrow an idea. We needed to talk with people in Cohasset, Marshfield, and, and all of a sudden, it, we all decided to establish a South Shore Irish Heritage Trail. Being the most Irish area of the United States, it seemed that we should do something similar to that. And we did that, uh, and we started just before the pandemic and worked through the pandemic and had our launch May 22nd a year ago on schedule. And it's been an enormous task. It's not completed, it never will be completed. And, uh, but it's exciting. We have wonderful stories to tell. And uh, Irish history, many people don't like history. It's all about battles and generals and all. Irish history is a story of people and the Irish Heritage Trail tells about those people, their challenges and their victories and their accomplishments. Well, I've always believed that history is best told as a story. It is. And that story connects with people as you go forward. And there's a lot of stories to tell about a lot of things, but certainly history of the Irish in Plymouth County and on the South Shore has been really part of, of the growth uh, of the county and some great history of the county. It is. And uh, we also were concerned with the economy and uh, especially with pandemic, so many areas of the economy took a hit. 
And so we were hoping with the Irish uh, Heritage Trail to increase tourism to the South Shore. Many people see Boston and they drive Route 3 right to Cape Cod mm -hmm. and they don't realize this fabulous South Shore that we have in between the two. And I know you're working very closely with the Plymouth County Development Group that does tourism. Uh, C. Plymouth. That's right. C. Plymouth has been wonderful. We are members of C. Plymouth, and they do not just the town of Plymouth, but they do the entire county, and they have been very supportive and helpful to us. So where do most people start the Irish uh, Heritage Trail? Well, there's nine towns involved, and we always say it begins in Weymouth. It's the gateway to the South Shore and ends in Plymouth. But in truth, you can start anywhere in the nine towns. You can do one, you can do an afternoon in a town, you can do a couple of weeks on the South Shore, uh, whatever is your, takes your fancy. So do you want to just share how people can go to your website and see all I would, that information? I would love to. We have a great website, ssirishtrail.org. And on it, uh, we tell all about our sites. There are 33 sites on the trail. Um, some of them uh, just look at it and think about the history that we tell you, and others you can actually tour. Uh, we uh, have discovered some of the most fabulous stories. Uh, Frederick Murphy in, uh, in Weymouth was awarded the uh, Congressional Medal of Honor. Uh, his story is just heartrending. Another uh, Weymouth hero uh, was the one who lowered the Confederate flag and raised the United States flag in Richmond in the right. Civil War. We have uh, great stories in, uh, in each of the towns. In Kingston, the O'Brien family came, a father and sons fought in the Civil War. Uh, two, two of the sons died. And uh, one of the stories in Kingston is the uh, property records show that an Irishman uh, owned a house in, in Kingston in the 1850s. This was not heard of in Ireland. This man could, had to rent property in his own country and now in the United States could own his own home. So one of the most emotional ones to me is the one, even though it's not in Plymouth County, in Cohasset, uh, Cohasset Cemetery. Can you uh, tell that story a little bit? Yes, uh, the Brig St. John was a coffin ship that came from uh, Galway. And could you describe what a coffin ship is? Yes, a, a, a coffin ship was a, a ships that uh, were used to bring immigrants from Ireland to the United States and Canada during the uh, Angota Moor, known as the Irish Famine. But in Irish, it, it says it more correctly as the Great Hunger. Okay. Um, but the Brig St. John was a coffin ship. They were outfitted, they were merchant ships outfitted. They were not geared to bring people, and, and they were terrible, horrible living conditions. And the Brig St. John came from Galway, the passengers came from uh, Galway and uh, Clare and, uh, in 1849. And uh, in October, a, a, a northeaster developed and the ship ran aground and was wrecked actually on Grampus Ledge in Cohasset in 99. Souls were lost, men, women, and children. This is the largest shipwreck on the South Shore. And every year uh, on the closest uh, Sunday to October 6th, the Plymouth uh, Ancient Order of Hibernians as a mass celebrated in a ceremony remembering those uh, who lost their lives. They are buried in Cohasset Cemetery the ancient order of Hibernians erected a beautiful Celtic cross in 1914. And uh, just uh, two years ago, a bench, a granite bench was dedicated and that is on the actual grave site of the uh, people buried there. And I, and I know each and every story um, has a lot of stories that go with them. And I, but I noticed, um, and I haven't seen it yet, I'm gonna go by it tonight on my way to a meeting in situate the Irish Proclamation in Situate Harbor. 
Yes, um, being the most Irish town in America, uh, we felt it was important to have some sort of monument. And the words of the proclamation of 1916 are just so compelling and so beautiful and, and really define so much of what freedom is that we chose to have those words. And they, uh, it's a replica of the proclamation. And to me, a very important part is on the back is the dedication that we make to all people who strive for freedom throughout the world. That's nice. That uh, this is really what it represents. And it's interesting to note that in the Irish proclamation, only one country other than Ireland is named, and that is the United States. The, um, the often children in America and their support for the Irish freedom. Well, I had a chance to visit Kilman Jail last summer when I was in Ireland, and, and there's, a, there's a litany of stories that go along with that day and that time yes. and the time shortly thereafter. Well, I'm old enough to remember um, John Kennedy, John Fitzgerald Kennedy's trip to Ireland, and it was a glorious time, and the reception was fabulous, and uh, they were the crowds, everything was wonderful. And at the end of it, the press was interviewing the uh, contingent that went with him and asked them what was the best part of this whole thing. His sister said the private luncheon with uh, De Valera. Others said the warmth of the people, the applause, and just the adulation. And they got to John Kennedy, and they said, what was the best part of the trip? And he said just two words, Arbor Hill. And this is where the heroes of 1916 are buried. It just touched his heart. And this is something we try to do with the South Shore Irish Heritage Trail, is touch people's hearts with the stories of, of people who have come here. And uh, our life, uh, we are indebted to them for what they've done. So of all the sites on the trail, of which there are many and many stories, which is your favorite? Oh, that's very hard I, because I, be I feel hard. like the mother to many of them. <laughs> it's <laughs> like naming your favorite child. <laughs> it, that is the hardest question. Um, I think it could be a, a woman, and I'm sorry, I don't remember her name right now, in Kingston, who was a Bridget. Uh, the Irish servant girls were called Bridgets because most people couldn't be bothered learning their name, and half the names were Bridget. So uh, they were known as Bridget, and it was kind of demeaning that people didn't think highly enough of them to call their, uh, learn their name. At any rate, this woman was uh, Bridget. She worked for the family for years. She remained single and uh, worked until she died in the house. And this family was a very well-to-do family in uh, Kingston, and they had her buried next to the family plot because she meant so much to them. Oh, wow. And uh, they were, her, her stone could be the oldest one in the, in the grave, it's certainly one of them. But uh, that touched my heart because my grandmother was a Bridget okay. and she worked in a house in Cambridge. She earned $3 a week, uh, $1 she sent home to Ireland, $1 she gave to the Catholic Church, 90 cents she put in the bank and she had her 10 cents to meet with her friends every Wednesday afternoon and have tea and a piece of pie or cake. When she was married six years later, she had enough for a down payment on a six-family house in Cambridge. Wow. Wow. And it was all the 90 cents a week that went into the bank. Wow, that's a, that's a great story. But uh, it, it, the Bridgets were interesting because they said that they civilized the Irish immigrants because they learned from the well-to-do, middle-class and upper-class, uh, the finer things of life and uh, the culture and all. And uh, I think that rings true. My grandmother actually took in laundry for four years so that she could buy a piano to have her girls learn wow. to play the piano. Unfortunately, neither one did. <laughs> wow. but, but I do think they had a civilizing influence. Well, those, those are great stories. Um, I have not done the, the trip from top to bottom. I've been to many of the sites, yes. but I intend to do that sometime this summer. Well, I, I think it's, 
they are connected in so many ways. John Boyle O'Reilly, who is a fabulous uh, Irish hero, uh, great poet, uh, editor of the pilot, had a summer house in Hull, and that is on our trail. It is now the Hull Public Library. But interestingly enough, at the dedication of the Forefathers Monument in Plymouth, he was the guest poet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're not quite sure whether the Forefathers were restive in their graves that day or not. But at any rate, he gave, uh, wrote and recited one of his poems. But what a great honor that was to mm -hmm. have this Irish immigrant uh, whose story is just fabulous. Um, but he, he, to me, connects from Hull to Plymouth almost the whole route. Mm -hmm. We have Weymouth and Hingham, of course, not touching that. But. So my son was working for three months with his company in Australia. So I was wow. telling that story everywhere about his escape. and His escape, it, it, you could not believe that his life is really a true story right. because if you wrote it as a novel, people would say, oh, couldn't happen. Right. And it really should be a major motion picture because right. it is just amazing right. that as a young, uh, young boy, he was in the British Army and then was uh, uh, nearly died because he was found guilty of treason, instead sent to Australia and then to escape uh, an impregnable prison up on a whaling ship. Right. Actually, it was a wonderful. And, and the Catalfer is another story like that that's fabulous. Wow. Well, can you share the um, site again for people to look at it? Yes, the SS for South Shore, Irish Trail, ssirishtrail.org. And uh, we have on that downloadable brochures for each of the towns, and we are going to, within a week, have a downloadable. Uh, brochure of the entire trail that we is going to print this afternoon, actually. And if people want to contact you and they have another suggestion to add to the trail or any questions, how would they reach you? Absolutely. On the, on the uh, website, there is a contact page. Right. And I uh, am sent the contact. Uh, Siobhan Hunter, who is a chair of the, situ uh, the Situate uh, Sister City Committee, actually receives them and she sends them to me immediately. Um, we, I have to say this committee that we've had to develop this uh, have such varied backgrounds and the common thread through it all is the, their love of Ireland and all things Irish and they've done an outstanding job. Well, thank you for joining me. Thank you for telling those stories. I know there'll be people that'll be watching this and hear about it for the first time. That's right. So I'm glad we had a chance to share all that information. Thank you, and we welcome them, and we, uh, uh, they can contact us and ask us anything. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Great. Thanks again. Thank you. Welcome back to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley in the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. I want to thank Brenda O'Connor for the great job she did in describing uh, her work on the Irish Heritage Trail uh, along the South Shore, the South Shore Irish Heritage Trail. Um, in this segment of the show, we always do something lighter in nature, some of our great county and colony history. The holidays for the month were May Day the 1st, National Teachers Day the 2nd, International Firefighters Day on the 4th, Mother's Day the 14th, um, National Burger Day the 22nd, Memorial Day the 29th, and some of our stories here through our notable record collection relate to those holidays. First one I'm gonna talk about is the Little Red Schoolhouse. It's an old schoolhouse located on the grounds of Brockton High School. It was built in 1875. Uh, the school closed its doors in June of 1963. It was preserved. It's was a Forest Avenue school. Um, it remains a vibrant and current component of the Brockton educational community. It is used for finals of the city's uh, spelling bee contest, a competition for which Brockton school children participate in annually. 
It is listed on the Register of Historical Places. It is managed by the Little Red Schoolhouse Association, and it's related to National Teachers Day. Um, the Strand Theater, which I've talked about before, um, relating to International Firefighters Day, there's a great monument to the firefighters who were killed at the Strand Fire. Um, it was a building that was on uh, near City Hall. It was a motion picture um, theater on the corner of Main Street and School Street. And the fire happened in March 1941. 13 firefighters were killed in that tragic fire. The event is honored every year as a remembrance to those deceased firefighters who answered the call of duty. And it's a continuing reminder of the dangers firefighters and other public safety officials faced every day. It was dedicated on May 10th, 2008, again, in Brockton City Hall Plaza. Next of the county records is Island Grove Park, connected to the Memorial Day holiday. If you ever have a chance to wander around Island Grove Park, it's a beautiful spot. You cross over Memorial Bridge, which is dedicated to those who lost their lives in the Civil War, and it leads over to a park. Uh, in that park, many of the abolitionists would gather pre-Civil War, and there were great speakers there, like William Lloyd Garrison, um, who spoke there uh, several times. People would come down from trains in Boston, by train in Boston, and walk over to Island Grove Park. Sometimes thousands of people. So it's a very historic place, but it still remains an active place for summer vacation programs, boating, fishing, and ice skating. And last but not least, one of our Plymouth Colony records that we always try to show. This one is in the Book of Laws, uh, 18, sorry, 1658. And the colonial court voted that people such as Quakers or others who are wandering up and down and not doing their job to make bread and allow people to, to live and thrive they're going to be put in a workhouse and penalized in a house of correction. And in that house of correction, make bread and do the things that they were supposed to do outside of the house of corrections. It says idle persons or rebellious children or servants that are stubborn shall be placed in this location. It's a sign of the times of how strict they were in colony colonial days in, in Plymouth Colony. I want to thank uh, Lorna Green Baker and Christine Richards, from my office, for the help with this show. I want to thank uh, Athena Grant and Emma Redden for helping me put this show together from Brockton Cable Access. This is my 151st show, and I am very happy to provide this information to people around Plymouth County because your home for most people is your most valuable asset and you need to do everything you can to protect that interest. So have a great Memorial Day. We'll see you next month. Thank you.